everyone and welcome to another video in our ongoing vlog uh, as we go through the DDP yoga journey and what's happening in my life. First of all the DDP yoga continues to go, uh, go well. The fat burner, switching it from stand up to fat burner has been harder than I expected. Because uh, I've done fat burner loads of times, but I think having been away from the floor exercises for so long, uh, I think doing stand up for as long as I did in hindsight was a mistake. So we're not going to be doing that anywhere near as long. So fat burner is going to get four weeks. Uh, we're going to begin into week three next week. Uh, so fat burner is going to get uh, four weeks. Then after that. I'm going to switch it up again. I'm not 100% sure what. Uh, so I'll have a think about that over the next few days. One idea was to create my own DDP yoga workout by doing what they did with Mixtape, which is like taking an exercise from this workout and an exercise from a different workout and putting it all together. So I'm thinking of putting my own Mixtape together kind of thing whereby it will be the standard exercises obviously um, such as you know uh, touchdown diamond car all the, the standard ones but mixing it up with the broken airplane crunches um, the leg stretches from stand up exploding knees and making my own bespoke DDP yoga workout to integrate with the bespoke workout that we're doing and the um, the red hot court finish and with that then comes do I keep it in the format that it is just now where it's the DDP yoga workout whether that's an actual one or my own mixtape the bespoke workout into Red Hot Core or do I amalgamate it into one giant workout? So there's some DDP yoga stuff, then into some bespoke stuff, some of the Red Hot Core stuff. Red Hot Core I think I will leave at the end anyway. I think it's a good it's a good session to finish on regardless. But I'm thinking of mixing it up with the DDP yoga and the bespoke workout stuff. Um, so maybe try that for a week once I put something together see how that goes uh, but for now I'm happy with the progress I still can't weigh myself um, none of the stores that are open currently sell the batteries that the scales use and having looked online I could obviously order them online but the cost of delivery would be more than the cost of the batteries so I don't need to know that urgently um, and again it's been pointed out before weight weight is an abstract in the sense of if you're becoming leaner but bulking up muscle wise and increasing muscle mass your weight can stay the same it can go up it can go down by a minuscule amount so it's, it's not the weight it's how that weight has been distributed across your body so it's more about how are you feeling and feeling wise i feel great i still have a gut that for some reason that just won't go away and when i say for some reason that some reason is diet um i try to have a healthy diet i really do um but i crumble at times um I'm getting better at that. Uh, one epiphany I had was that I don't need to have the willpower to resist snacking 24 hours a day. I only need the willpower to resist snacking when I'm at the shops. So if I have the willpower when I'm at the shops and I don't buy in the junk food, then when I'm at home, especially in the current climate when there's a lockdown, when I'm at home, I don't need the willpower because even if I do crack, 
and crave some kind of snack, chocolate bar, bag of crisps, or chips if you're American. There's nothing in the house of that, so I can't crack. Um, so that is becoming easier, but diet has been possibly my worst vice, for lack of a better term. Uh, so we'll see how that progresses. But for the moment, I am definitely feeling leaner. My thigh and leg muscles are much more defined. Uh, speaking to a buddy of mine who's a qualified physiotherapist, he said that when you lose weight, or like you, know, you start, um, when you start slimming down, your muscles will get more defined simply because that's what happened. you're you're shrinking with regards to certain aspects of it so they become more prominent so i'm taking that as a positive sign that things are going in the right direction uh, we're coming up to one full year uh, i need to check the exact date but I believe it was definitely in june of last year that we started this journey so we are coming up for a full year so we'll see how that is Personal life, I'm still working from home. Uh, it's it's normal now. I'm used to working from home now. Uh, the first couple of weeks were hard because uh, I live alone. Uh, Josh is here this weekend, but I do live alone, so I'm used to having time by myself. But that was broken up through the week by going to the office and mixing with my co-workers. Got a few really close friends at work. And so I was seeing people, even though I live alone, so in the house I'm on my own, I was still seeing people every day. And that's been a difficult adjustment, but we have been doing conference calls. And the other day, uh, <laughs> we did a conference call on Zoom, which seems to be what everyone's doing now and there was nine of us and my first thought was the Brady Bunch because that's what it looked like it was nine little squares with all of us in our one little box um, and through the whole um, one hour management meeting that we had all I could think of was we're the Brady Bunch uh, and that helped me get through you need humour in these kind of days um, but work's going well relatively speaking considering we're still in a lockdown no one knows how things are going to progress it's a definite week to week thing um, here in the UK if you're not from the UK yourself there's a thing the, the government's having like a uh, press conference tomorrow or well, Sunday um, uh, as of recording is tomorrow where it's believed to be that they're going to be discussing the roadmap out of the lockdown so that's going to be interesting for a number of reasons and we believe, having talked amongst my friends and my colleagues, we believe that it's going to be things being unlocked in the reverse of how they were locked. So the first things to get locked down were the huge sporting events, um, anything where large crowds would gather um, regularly, so sporting events, festivals, concerts. So they'll be the last things to be opened. But I believe the schools will be phased back in, office workers, uh, factory workers maybe will be phased back in. But it may be that if you can work from home, they'll still ask you to work from home. Um, if that's the case, then I'm okay with it. Uh, as I've mentioned before in videos, while it does suck to be away from friends and colleagues for so long, the, there are benefits to working from home. Uh, as I mentioned, having a lion in the morning is a great benefit. Um, normally going to work, I have to leave the house at like quarter past seven in the morning. Now, I start at nine, I don't even have to get out of bed till half past eight, which is fantastic. Uh, finishing at 5 p.m. and then I'm home at 5 p.m. So that's a bonus. There is no commute to work, so there is no cost of commuting to work. Um, so there is all these little benefits and there's also benefits that whereas before you finish at five 
and it would be like, okay, I need to get this finished before five o'clock, I'm leaving. Now, if you run over for five or 10 minutes, it doesn't really matter because you're home. You can do that. Uh, like yesterday was a bank holiday in the UK, but because I live in my office now, um, I logged in for a couple hours. So then when I go back on Monday, I don't have a backlog to catch up on and I can just crack on with it on Monday morning. So there is a, there are benefits to it. Um, but I still miss people. Filling time, because um, you may have noticed there wasn't a video last week. We had a lot of technical issues last week. Trying to get the video made and in the end I just gave up. Um, so there wasn't a video last week, so video this week. Um, so killing time, um, been watching as regular viewers of the channel, however few you are. Uh, well, no, I've uh, been watching classic 80s and 90s movies with Josh. Uh, mostly sticking with Arnie movies. So we did all the Terminator movies. Then we did Predator, Predator 2, Predators and The Predator. Um, so there's two film series done for him. And then we watched, uh, last week we watched two movies. We watched The Running Man and Total Recall, the original with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, he had seen the remake with Colin Farrell, which is actually a good movie itself. Um, Total Recall, Colin Farrell and Total Recall, Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's the same, at its core it's the same basic story. They are completely different movies. So, the, that's, to me that's how a remake should be done, in the sense of, don't tell the exact same story that was done. Obviously you have certain beats you have to hit and various other things, but in general, you tell your own version of that story. It's why, and I wrote an article about this about 10 years ago and it's still relevant today, it's why the horror icons, the classic ones, Wolfman, The Mummy, Dracula, Frankenstein, Invisible Man, to use a recent example, it's why those characters endure because you tell a story that at its core sticks to the basic tenets of the original tale but you interpret it in your own way so you could watch a hundred different Dracula movies and they would be different all of them even to the what powers does Dracula have what affects them what doesn't affect them so with that with the Total Recall we made that's what they did and it worked really well but we watched the Arnold Schwarzenegger version Josh absolutely loved it um, he's a huge fan of Arnie's one-liners as we all are really um, so we've done them I was going to do Conan but I'm thinking of switching it from uh, Arnie for a bit so I'm going to get on to the Die Hard series um, we'll see how he does with them Die Hard's obviously a fantastic movie. Die Hard 2 is a great movie as well. Uh, William Sadler's fantastic in it. Uh, gets unfairly compared to the first one, I think. And uh, then Die Hard with a Vengeance is great. Die Hard with a Vengeance is fantastic. Uh, fourth and the fifth ones aren't as good, but they're still, still worth watching. Um, so we're taking a break from the movies this weekend. So by next weekend when he's here that we'll get on to Die Hard and we'll work from there. So it's next weekend that we'll get on to Die Hard and we'll work from there. If any of you have any suggestions for Bear in Mind is 13, uh, so I am pushing it about with some of the films, uh, but Bear in Mind what would be relatively appropriate for a 13 year old. Uh, what recommendations do you have? from classic 80s and 90s movies that he should give a go. Um, bear in mind he's seen most of the kid friendly classics from the 80s and 90s so it's going to be ones where we're going to a little bit more adult territory. Um, nothing with gratuitous nudity, violence should be okay. So if you have any recommendations, leave them in the comments below on the video here on YouTube or leave them as replies on the Facebook page or the Twitter feed and we'll see what you comment. Out with that, I've still been plowing through Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, I didn't play it as much this week because I had other things to do with it. Um, but 
for over 90 hours now, we're closing in on 100 hours in the game. I've almost completed all of the regions as it relates to finding all the locations, completing the locations and side quests that are available to this point. So I would imagine by the end, by the start of next weekend, I will be ready to get back to the actual story of the game. Which I'm looking forward to. It's been a bit of a grind, but that's my choice. Um, the one thing I don't like about the game, uh, and it's a feature I believe should be in the game, but it should be an optional one, is the level scaling. So, whenever you bump yourself up to a certain level, no one in the game will be anything less than four levels below you. So even a region when you start the game, which is like a level 8 or 9, uh, by the time, like now I'm on level 60, characters leveled up to level 60, the lowest ranked goons in the game are level 56. What it means is you never get more powerful. Uh, it's like um, every time you upgrade a weapon in yourself, every other person in the game gets upgraded along with you. So you're attack stats go up by a certain amount but their defense stats go up by the same amount so you're never getting any more powerful you're never becoming you're you're kind of stagnated where you are now and for some people they like that because it gives them the challenge for other people like myself who i play story given story driven games for the story you know i like to explore and do the story i'm not to a degree a challenge, but if my character is becoming this all-powerful, almost godlike assassin, I want to feel like an all-powerful godlike assassin. I want to be able to come in and take you out with one hit. I want to be able to assassinate you unseen, that kind of thing, and it doesn't happen. Um, you can adjust the level scaling, but you can't remove it, and that is a glaring omission, because it was level scaling in Origins, but you can turn it off. Um, with this one you can't turn it off and that's a mistake for me because um, there should be regions that are easy and there should be regions that are hard um, but if every region is the same then what's the point but anyway ran over there I have been enjoying the game I'm still enjoying the game and I'm looking forward to getting back to the story but if I can be serious for a minute <sighs> The level of engagement and the level of interaction I get for these videos is piss poor. And the views are consistent, which I appreciate, thank you very much. But that seems to be it. There doesn't seem to be much in the way of growth. The engagement isn't there. And at times it almost feels like I'm. I'm just shouting into a void, and that's what I'm doing. I'm doing these videos, I'm putting time and effort into recording them, putting them online, editing them, uploading them, putting them online. Uh, and that's not just for the yoga videos, that's for the unboxing videos and various other things as well. And while I do do it because I enjoy doing it, there comes a point where the lack of feedback is concerning, whereas is anyone really watching them? If you are one of the people who are watching the videos, what is it preventing you from hitting the like button or even the dislike button, you know, one or the other? Um, what is preventing you from leaving a comment, asking a question? I'd really like to know because I spend, and then this sounds like a poor me story, and it's not meant to be, so I apologize if that's how it's coming across. Um, I spend time, my own time, obviously, putting these things together. And for a 15 minute video, that can be seven, eight hour days. A seven, eight hour day to set everything up, to record the video, to edit the video, to make sure everything's fine and in sync to add any graphics, to do thumbnails, that kind of thing. And 
at times it seems like, is it worth it? And I believe it is. If this brings some kind of happiness, joy, encouragement, inspiration to one person outside my immediate sphere, then it, of course it's worth doing. But the needy part of me it sometimes just craves some kind of validation. And I feel like such a tool for even thinking and bringing it up. But it's become apparent that engagement is minimal. And I'd like to know how I can change that for you. For those who are watching and for those who are sharing, I would like to know how how can I get you to engage with me? How can what what would you like to see covered on the channel? Uh, we've got a number of unboxings coming up. Uh, I've got some items that because uh, I did go and visit the office on Tuesday. I had to actually physically go to the office. And it's the first time I've been outside my hometown, or even my immediate vicinity, my immediate area of my hometown, in roughly eight weeks. So that was weird in itself, but. Because I live alone, normally when I order something to be delivered, I get it delivered to the work address because no one's here to um, receive deliveries. So I would get it delivered to the work address, I would sign for it there, and I would take it and I went on that day. So some of the things I'd ordered before the lockdown had arrived after I'd been um, isolated working from home. So I'd been sitting there for a while, so I've picked them up. So we have roughly six or seven items to unbox on the channel and I'm hoping that you will join me for them. Uh, the top 10 movies of the decades thing is still ongoing. Uh, as I said, we were almost ready to go. I just had to tighten up, finish the scripts and then print the scripts off. Um, and then, but I don't have a printer here so I was going to do that at work also. But then I got sent home. Uh, to work from home so I don't have access to a printer uh, so that is waiting until I can get back to the office proper as well uh, it'll be worth the wait I promise you it's one of those things because of what the subject matter is it's not going to change over time so uh, the, the movies for each decade are chosen the scripts from, say the, the scripts are completed you just need to print them off now and we've got, we've got a the previous generation of the phone I'm using to record this, I've still got it. Uh, it doesn't have a SIM in it, but the Wi-Fi still works. Could I save the documents to my other phone and just read from there? That's an option. Uh, we'll see what's happening after this weekend. Uh, so I'd rather have a printed copy of my own. Uh, but we'll see what's happening after this weekend with the government announcement. Maybe I'll be back in the office soon enough anyway. Uh, but the 10 movies for each of the 10 years are chosen. I'm hoping you join me for that because that's been a long time putting together. Everyone loves a list. Everyone loves to argue about a list about why X was on there and why wasn't kind of thing. Uh, as mentioned though the rules for this does mean there will be objectively some great movies that reviewed really well that won't feature on the list because the rules are Josh or I must have seen the movie it must have had a cinematic release but we don't have to have seen it in the cinema and we don't have to have seen it in the year that it came out but we one or both of us must have seen the movie so there will be certain films that have reviewed fantastically well that won't appear because we haven't seen them. And I, that's unfortunate for those movies, but it's our list. It's our top 10 movies of the decade. And we have to be fair. And we, we can't just put a movie in because it's the cool thing to do to include that movie. Uh, it's a cool thing to consider that to be a great movie, that movie you love. If I haven't seen a movie, I'm not going to pretend I have for cool points. So there will be films on this list that will baffle some people for being considered one of the best movies of the decade. 
of that year of the decade and the Wii movies obviously won't be a surprise at all. I think that some of the some of the movies chosen to be the best of that particular year will cause some controversy. I'm hoping it does because the debate is fantastic. Um, what we found interesting when we were doing it is though, there will be because the rules can be only when we do the final 10 the rules are that it's only one movie per year so it'll be the best movie of 2010 the best movie of 2011 and so on what that means is like i'm just pulling these years out as an example it's not necessarily what's going to happen in the video is that the second best movie of 2013 could be a better movie than the one that won 2012. So objectively, if we were doing it just as an overall breakdown of the 100 movies that's going to be included here, to that 2012 movie may not actually be there. So there are going to be movies that miss out simply because they came out in a really good year. I think 2018 was a tough one, 2015 was a tough one as well. Um, this would be almost impossible if we were doing 1984, which for me, and I'm going to, I think I've mentioned, I'm doing a video on why 1984 was for me the best year for movies ever. Some argue 1999, because 1999 was a fantastic year for film as well. But when we get to the actual top 10, top 10 uh, of the decade, I'm hoping you're still with us, and I'm hoping that your favourite makes the film. I know mine did. And that's been my week so far. Uh, we're going to be doing DDP Yoga Fat Burner for another week. I'm going to be trying to get Assassin's Creed Odyssey done. Um, Streets of Rage 4 came out. I'm excited to be getting on to that. Uh, the Arrowverse show is finished this weekend. They've all had their seasons cut short I believe. Uh, because of the coronavirus pandemic stopping any uh, the filming process because uh, for people who don't know when TV shows like the Arrowverse shows are done uh, they're filming as they go so they'll have maybe filmed the first four episodes when the first episode airs and then they're continually filming as the series is on air uh, as the season airs so they hadn't finished the season before they got to the problems we were all having so they had to cut it short like the Netflix shows if you watch the Netflix Marvel shows they were filmed and then all released at once uh, so it's a different way of doing things so they'll be gone so that'll free up some time for me as well but I've taken up enough of your time today if you are one of those people who does engage with us thank you very much but to everyone watching this video thank you for taking the time to do so Thank you for joining us on this journey. So please like and share. Stand applause of the YouTube Video Maker's Love Book. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you again soon.